Hi, I'm Johnny Temple from Akashic Books, and I'm very pleased today to be speaking with Rivers Solomon, uh, who is the author of the very best book published in 2017, An Unkindness of Ghosts. Uh, and Rivers, I wanted to start by congratulating you on winning the Lambda Literary Award for your book, The Deep. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was really exciting. With award nominations, you really never know what's going to happen. But given the sort of the strength of all the people in the category, I was really, really quite surprised. I didn't write a speech because I really just thought that wasn't going to happen. So yeah, no, it was a really pleasant surprise. I understand you've been learning to draw. What what compels you in that direction? I think uh, at heart it's because I'm a storyteller and I want new ways to tell stories. Um, I love graphic novels. I love comics. Um, recently, I wrote a picture book and it really, really frustrated me that I could not even begin to try to illustrate it. Um, and so, I don't know, enough is enough. It's time. Your Twitter account has a pinned tweet that says, there is very little I don't wish abolished. Can you give us a sample of right now, today, three things that you would like to see abolished? Um, okay. Uh, the United States, most states, um, gender as we know it and how it looks, especially in its restrictive forms that don't allow people to um, break out of it or are punished for breaking out of its current confines. And three, the vegetable fruit dichotomy, um, which is a very, very socialized phenomenon because how we categorize fruit and vegetables is completely made up and not consistent at all. Um, so yeah, I want that to go as well. With the recent protests that have followed the police murder of George Floyd, it's been a bit surprising to me how international the protests are. For you, born in the U.S. but living in London. I'm curious to hear your perspective on the international nature of the protests. Yeah. No, actually, it's something that's been an extraordinary relief for me because um, the United Kingdom, obviously, like the U.S. Um, and a lot of Western nations, has an extremely violent history wrapped up in colonialism um, and racism, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but I think it has had less reckoning with this history than the U.S. has. Um, it's not confronted it as much. And... Um, here, I think people really like to pretend, um, specifically white people like to pretend that it doesn't exist. Um, it's kind of the same thing as the Canada effect. Well, um, you know, everything is bad in the US, but we're free and everything's good here. And the UK kind of has that too. Um, so I was really, really ple presently surprised when the protests um, spread here and this conversation is really happening um, because for people who are living here, who are not occupying um, sort of more privileged spaces, uh, it's a very hard place to live. Um, and there's lots of um, unrest here. So in one, in one way, it is solidarity with what's happening in the US, but it's also, this is our moment to talk about and fight against things that are happening here. So it's been really great. Since the US is not likely to be abolished in the immediate future, do you want Joe Biden to win the U.S. presidential election in November? Oh, God. Uh, do you believe that in real life there are heroes? Yes, I do. Absolutely. Can you name two historical figures who you consider to be heroes? Ida B. Wells, specifically her work as a writer and as a journalist who did sort of deep research and into lynchings and sort of um, telecasting this for the world so that, you know, she seems to me a kind of truth teller. And then similarly, for, for the same reason, Zora Neale Hurston, who's a very complicated figure, but so much of her work was about... Um, collecting histories and stories of people and preserving them. Um, histories that I think without her sort of work in collecting these folk tales would have died. Um, and as someone who values stories and preserving them, that's really important to me. Akashic has been very successful with an unkindness of ghosts. 
And, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and Aster is one of my favorite protagonists of the 21st century. Did Aster come to you fully formed or largely formed, or did Aster develop as you wrote? Aster definitely developed. Um, she did not come fully formed at all. Um, I think I had pieces of her that have remained into the sort of fine, final version of the manuscript. But um, I believe really firmly that a character, just like people, are kind of formed by their lives. So I discovered her character as I was seeing what her life was like. Um, and you know, I drew things um, from my personal life. And that doesn't mean like just from me personally, but from what I've seen and witness and family and friends and, um, you know, tried to make someone who was really real and organic. I also love Asta. I love her to death. Um, like, I think about her still. So, yeah. Do you know when the public is going to be able to read your next novel, Sorrowland? And can you say a few words about the book? Yeah, so Sorrowland will hopefully um, come out May 2021. Sort of my attempt to deal with, and this is true with unkindness, it's true with the deep, I guess it's going to be true of everything that I write, um, to sort of tangle with American history. Um, um, it's a bit different than unkindness in that it's a contemporary um, novel and it takes place kind of in the here and now it takes place in you know states that we can recognize and see um, but it's about a young woman who escapes from the black nationalist um, very religious compound where she grew up um, probably what outsiders would call a cult um, and um, after leaving and she's surviving independently in the woods, her body begins to transform um, in ways that she doesn't understand. She doesn't understand what's happening. And so she has to kind of connect what's happening to her body with her upbringing um, in it's a place called Caneland where she, where she grew up. Um, and as she's tangling with that, it sort of intersects with all of sort of a ver various traumas of American history. If and when society returns to a less socially distanced or a non-socially distanced existence, is there anything you're going to miss about a more quarantined lifestyle? You know what? I have to say it's really cozy. I felt like I've spent a lot of really quality time with my family, um, which is you know, a wonderful privilege to have. It hasn't been the case for everybody, obviously. Um, for people who've had to keep working. But for me, it's been, um, you know, seeing my children just be themselves and be playful and be silly and adorable and, um, you know, cooking together and eating together. The, the truth is I'll probably miss a lot of it. Um, that said, I'm ready. <laughs> for the social, for the next step, for the, for the non-social distant future.